Hello, hello everyone, Sean Astrom here with SA Studios and today I'm super excited to share with you a tutorial on how to properly set up our new product, CG Terrain, right here inside of Cinema 4D using Redshift. So if, if you hop on over to our website, sastudios.xyz forward slash store, you can see we have three new collections here. There's Alien Terrains, Crater Terrains, and Epic Mountains CG Terrain. And you know, you can click on these guys, dive in here, read all about them, but essentially it's a collection of 16K seamless terrain maps uh, that, yeah, can be brought into any 3D software. But today, I'm just gonna show you here in Cinema, good old Cinema 4D. But yeah, have, have a look through all this stuff. Um, been a long time in the making. Uh, so yeah, incredibly excited to finally get these out. But if we just dive on into cinema here, I have a completely blank scene and I wanna show you guys how easy it is to get this going. Uh, so the first thing I wanna do though is I wanna go over to the asset browser. Now in the latest version of Cinema 4D, they have added a new feature called watch folders. And if you click this database tab up here, you can see connect watch folder. Essentially this allows you to kind of navigate your traditional file system on Windows or OS X and just essentially point to a folder and say, I would like to you know, load up these assets every time I use the asset browser. And that's really all that does for us. And if you also go into the preferences, you can see how they're linked in there as well. In this case, I've brought in all three CG terrain collections we currently have. And you know they're just neatly organized in a folder here. And if you you know throw them onto any secondary hard drive or your primary hard drive, you'll be able to access them no problem. I'm just going to dive into this first one here, Alien Terrain 01A, and let's scale this up a little bit here. And it's going to take a second to load some of these in. Uh, and then we have A and B. So each version of these are the same but different. So we have four completely unique terrain maps in this collection, or every collection rather. And then there are two seeds or versions, so you can kind of mix and match and get the look you need very easily. Uh, so we're gonna play around with this, this one here though, but for the time being, I'm just gonna minimize this and we're gonna bring in a simple plane. And if we turn on our geometry lines, or garage shading lines, as Cinema calls them, um, we can see our topology here. Now, uh, the, the first thing I like to do is just go in here into the object settings and width segments, let's set that to 512 by 512. Now, it might seem like a lot, but I've just found this is a, a good number to work with uh, within this uh, primitive object here. So, we're gonna call this guy uh, Terrain VP for viewport. Then we're gonna make a second copy here and we're gonna call this Terrain Render. Now, if I right click on this guy, I need to add a render tag here. We're gonna add an RS object tag and that'll become important here in a bit. But the other thing I want to do is change the scale of both of these. So I'm just going to select both of them here and let's make them quite large. We're going to go 10,000 by 10,000. And the last thing I'm going to do here in terms of geometry is bring in a figure. Now, there's all sorts of ways you can change the scale inside of Cinema 4D to work at larger scales correctly, but I typically like to just set everything up at like one tenth scale. So this figure here, I'm just going to go under the coordinates here just as a, as a reference. I, and I'm going to scale this down by one tenth so we can get an idea of how large our scene is. Um, so here's our little figure here. And, you know, we're going to make this terrain about yay big. Uh, so that's just good to have in your scene to know how large everything is. So the next thing I'm gonna do is create a null and we're just gonna call this CG terrain. Pop it down here in the hierarchy and we're gonna put the viewport and the render right in there. And then another very important 
object we need here, or uh, deformer rather, is this displacer. So uh, I'm gonna pop that under my viewport here. And really that's pretty much the basic setup here. Um, well, last thing I'm gonna do here in, in regards to this little setup is we're going to toggle the viewport visibility. We want that on and the render visibility. We're gonna set that to off here on the terrain viewport and the terrain render we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to do viewport visibility off and render visibility on. And okay, that's that's it. That's the setup. So I just went into the render settings here and we want to make sure we're set to redshift and I am. And yeah, really that's about it. We're going to start to make a material here that is going to make all this work. So if I bring up my asset browser man i don't know if i'm ever going to remember the name of this i really want to call it the content browser but asset browser um, we're going to start to bring some of these guys in so i'm going to go here to redshift and create a new standard uh, surface material and that's the new material that they recently added in the latest version of redshift and it's fantastic i'm going to just bring in this first alien terrain 01a 4k map right inside of here you see we get a nice little preview here. Now another thing to point out is all of these maps uh, have two copies. Um, so there's 4K copies and 16K copies. So if we navigate over here to the file path name, you can see the name here, Alien Terrain 01 underscore A, and this is the 4K version. Now the reason we've put in the 4K versions is they're much quicker to load and much quicker to work with. And then once we're happy with how everything's looking, we can simply swap them out for the 16K full res final quality maps. Um, and the difference is pretty staggering. Um, it's literally 16 times more resolution than the 4K versions. Uh, so, but yeah, so just know that you can very easily swap those out. And I'll, as a demo here, I'll just show you, you can just literally type in 16 here in the, in the map. And it's gonna think here for a second and it will swap that out and now we're we're working with the 16k but yeah it's 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 a lot larger file size so this is a nice workflow to get real speedy feedback and all that good stuff so this this here is our base color map i'm just going to plug it into the color channel here and we're going to go into our material settings here and i'm just going to lower the reflection all the way down to zero and for now we're just going to leave everything as it is here. Uh, the other thing I will change, and that is the diffuse model. If we hop on in here, and this is, I think, exclusive to Redshift, they have this uh, D Elon Lambertian Spheres diffuse model that is basically ideal for terrains. And this is the, the basic setup here. So we'll just copy this name out of here and we'll name the material Alien Terrain, like so. And we can just simply throw this right on to our CG terrain null here. And you'll see we get a nice little preview here of the map on our plane. That's all well and good. Now, the next thing I need to do is bring in the height map. So that's this red guy here. And don't be alarmed that this is red. Um, we've set this up this way to save on file size because the displacement height data is only in the red channel. So that's why we're getting this red channel preview here, but you can see in our um, node preview here, it's black and white as you'd expect from a normal height map. Um, the other node we need is a displacement map or a displacement node rather. And we'll just plug this guy right into here, text map, that's the one we want. And we're gonna plug this into our displacement here on the output. Now this is specifically gonna drive the displacement settings in our Redshift object tag. So uh, yeah, it's kind of tricky or a little funky at first in Redshift. Displacement's not gonna work until you go in here and actually enable this stuff. So you have to you know, go under the geometry tab, turn on override and tessellation. That's what we want. So we're gonna check that on. 
And then we're going to also go down to the displacement section here and check this on. And that's kind of the, the basic setup. So the other thing you're probably wondering is how do I visualize this height map data inside my viewport? And there's a neat little trick we can do for that. And that is why I put this displacer in here. We are going to uh, go into this displacer and add in our height map here as well. So you just bring up the uh, asset browser again here. And let's go here under the shading tab, shader. And I might actually be able to load it in here. Yeah, we can just go right in here, bitmaps, height right there. Boom. That's the one we want. And so now that's loaded into here. So the funky thing about this is the displacer inside of here by default is not quite set up the way we want. Um, it's not going to work quite the same as the redshift displacement. So we have to kind of match it. And the first thing we need to change is this type. So if we go under here, we need to set this to intensity, uh, not intensity centered. And let me just crank up the height so you can see what's going on here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna use a value of 1,000. And let's see what we got here. And actually, let's go a little higher than that. Let's go 2,500. So here we go. So so there we go. You're starting to see um, some displacement here on our object. And and I'm also gonna hop back into the material. Let's go viewport and let's increase the resolution here. Texture preview size. Let's set this to like 2K, so we get a little more detail here. There we go. So that's looking nice. Um, so now you can see what kind of preview we get here. Um, you know, the material in combination with the displacer. So, and I'm gonna, let's go a little higher. Let's go 3000. There we go, that's looking nice. So that's giving us a nice preview here, but what happens when we fire up the Redshift render view? Let's take a look here and see. Um, you're going to see here that we're getting a nice flat plane still. And I'm just going to lower my resolution here a little bit. Let's go 960 by 540. And then we should probably set up some sort of lighting real quick. So I'm going to hop back into my asset browser. And let's bring in an HDRI here real quick, uh, CG HDRI version three we'll go with alien skies dome light and then here in this texture slot let's just grab one of these guys let's go with this you know what let's go with oh one here let's do the 2k version just so it's nice and speedy get that loaded up in there and then let's turn this guy back on and let's crank up the exposure a little bit maybe three. <clears throat> That's looking nice. And yeah, so you're probably wondering, okay, well, I, I see the terrain in the viewport. How do we get it going inside of the render view? That is done through the material. So we got our height map here, our displacement going in here. Now you can actually do this two ways. You can set this up via the displacement node. Right in here, we have our scale parameter. And if I change this value to 3000, just like we have here in the displacer, well, you're gonna see it doesn't do a whole lot. And that's because the best way to probably do this is within the tag. So I'm gonna go back to my displacement node here and let's set this back to one. And then in the actual Redshift object tag under geometry here, we are going to set the minim minimum edge length here to zero, and we're going to set max subdivisions to two. And this is sort of like how um, the default subdivision surface works inside of Cinema. If you just add one of these guys here by default, that's essentially what you're getting. So at render time, Redshift is doing that subdivision at render time, essentially, with these settings. But it's all about this uh, screen space adaptive subdivisions here with this edge length. But for the time being, uh, we're just going to leave that at zero. So the other settings we want to change here is maximum displacement and displacement scale. Now, in order to match what we've set up here, 
there's some weird math that's involved. I don't know why it's not one to one, but for whatever reason, it's a third. <laughs> we put in 3000 here. So if I go to my RS object tag here and set this to 1000, we're actually going to be matched to the displacement in here. Now, the last thing we need is to crank up maximum displacement. This is essentially capping out the displacement. So we'll put in a value a little bit higher here. And I think 1200 works fine. And as you can see, just like that, we're getting a nice preview here of the displacement. So the cool thing is this is, you know, our render time displacement. And what we're seeing in our viewport is just coming from the displacer here. Now I'm gonna hop back to my redshift tag here. Now I'm gonna lower maximum subdivisions down to zero. So we're actually not subdividing this at all. And you can still see that the, the level of detail is incredible. And that is because you have this auto bump map feature, which essentially is generating a perfect normal map at render time from the height map. So really you only need these two maps to get going with these terrains. So we have the color map and we have the height map. And yeah, just like that, you can see that we have beautiful terrain working right inside of cinema. You can see that this is one to one. If we zoom in here to one of these like mountain peaks, you can see we're pretty much spot on there. Um, let me turn on save frames, crank this up a little bit so you can see where we're at. So this is what we got in our viewport and this is what we get in our render. Now, obviously it's pretty important to be able to visualize your scene here in the viewport. And over the years, I've tried different techniques for doing this, but I found that this is really the best way to do it inside of cinema. So the last thing I want to show you guys here is how we can tile this because that's another nice thing about these maps. They're completely 100% seamless. So I'm going to turn off my render view here and I'm going to bring in a cloner and we are going to also bring in a instance object. So this instance here is going to be the terrain render. So if I just select this guy and let's see, oh, I actually ref <laughs> I actually did an instance of the clone. We want to do an instance of the terrain render here. So dragging that in there. Now we'll pop that into the cloner and we can actually set this to multi instance. And then I want to, set my grid array to five by five. And now we need to put in the right size here. So if you remember our terrain set up at 10,000 by 10,000. So we'll just take those values and we'll go 10,000 by 10,000. And I'm just gonna turn on the render view to see what we got going on here. And you can see nothing yet. Uh, let me zoom this out here. So we need to also add a copy of our material to the cloner as well, because the instance, since this object doesn't actually have the material added, we just have to put a copy of that on there. And just like that, you guys can see we have beautifully tiled terrain. And the nice thing is this is all instance from our main render geometry. And if I just shrink this down a little bit here and get in here, you can see that, yeah, you just get beautiful, um, you know, tiling off all the way off into infinity. And that's just a killer, killer thing about the way these maps work. Traditionally with these uh, terrain maps, you know, they, they typically don't tile. So we spend a lot of time setting these up to tile. And yeah, if I hop over here to uh, this edge here, you can see how perfectly that tiles. So pretty darn cool. Now, let me just, let's see here, crank up the height a little bit. I wanna go 1500. And you can see how we're getting capped off here. Again, that's that maximum displacement. So we wanna increase this above. We'll set that to 1600. 
And then just so we're matched up in the viewport, we'll go to our displacer object. Now remember, this is a multiplier of three. So we can go 1500 times three and that'll get us a one-to-one -one match here in the viewport. And yeah, guys, it's, it's really that easy to get the basic setup going. If I hop back into my object tag here and crank up the subdivisions a little bit, let's go to three. You can see the kind of detail we're gonna get. Now we are getting a little air here, and this is one sort of gotcha with this cloner setup. In order for the displacement to work correctly, well, at least the adaptive displacement it doesn't work right now if you know we're cloning this object. So that's all this air is saying. And we can simply just turn off screen space adaptive. But for now, I'm not going to worry about it because you don't really, you're not really going to see that um, as, as it's really just referring to these, you know, cloned copies of our terrain that are more off into the distance. Thanks so much for checking out this tutorial, guys. In the next one, we're gonna take a deeper dive in how to properly scatter around a bunch of trees, plants, all that good stuff, and also take advantage of some of the other provided texture maps. Hope you all have a great day.